Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thanks to Deem and the uh, Heritage Council for inviting me here to have a small uh, uh, chat with you uh, about my property, the Merchant's House and Store, uh, Home Reborn. My name is uh, Paul Gleeson. Um, I hail from uh, Kilrush in County Clare. I am the owner of the Merchant's House and Store. Um, sorry, sorry, yes. you mightn't be able to hear me, I'm not used to this. <laughs> and uh, I'm also a sixth uh, generation shopkeeper. So that's my, my main job. I, I'm very passionate about our built heritage, um, particularly our vernacular built heritage. The um, buildings and homes Left, um, left to us in trust by uh, previous generations and to ensure that they are handed on to the next generation as intact as we can find them. Um, this is uh, my property, the uh, Merchant's House. It, uh, it's a Georgian house, a Georgian townhouse. It dates from 1810 and in, this photograph dates from uh, 19, uh, 1910, approximately 100 years later. Um, the uh, house uh, was uh, built in 1810. Um, in, in, in 1811, uh, Bartholomew Glynn leased, leased the property for three lives from the local landlord, John Ormsby Vanderer. Um, Bartholomew Glynn's family would go on to be the uh, merchant princes of Kilrush. And approximately 80 years later, his grandson, uh, Henry uh, Glynn, um, Inherited, inherited the property, and the property that we see today uh, is the result of um, works that he carried out in approximately 1895. Uh, he installed a bar and shop on the ground floor, and generally Victorianized and renov renovated the property. So what we see um, today in uh, 2018 is as a result of what he did um, in, in the mid 1890 in the mid 18. Uh, 90s. Um, the house had many colourful characters that uh, lived in the property. Um, I'll just go on to the next slide. I'm sorry here. Um, one, one, no, one noted character um, is Tommy Ryan, or Thomas Ryan, or Tommy Ryan, and you can see that he was uh, standing outside the um, property with his uh, little barrel, which Guinness at Tommy Ryan's every time. Uh, I've asked the Diageo archivist, and they have no no record of uh, this slogan. So, uh, <laughs> so obviously he was ahead of the uh, um, Diageo uh, marketing department. But it's funny this picture and the previous picture uh, were actually very very important as as the story goes on in terms of um, reconstructing what we had lost. Um, uh, you can see into the shop, and you can actually see part of the original shop front. And uh, it, it, it's things like this, little snippets that you find along the way that are actually very important in um, conserving and uh, preserving uh, our, our property. Now, despite, um, despite the Dubliners playing in a mini concert in uh, 1963 in the uh, back bar, uh, the bar closed for good in uh, 1968. And um, the shop front was removed and uh, as you can see, this horrendous 1970s window and two doors were put in. They dismantled the bar, and the bits they didn't take out, they covered them over with beauty board. And thankfully, um, they didn't go far with what they took out of the place. They um, uh, brought them to the uh, outbuildings and uh, deposited them there. Um, so. So it, the story moved on until um, 1989. Uh, my family acquired the property. Uh, it was used as a house in, in the interim. Um, uh, my dad, um, as would be the case in a lot of small towns, had been looking over the back wall, and there was a large garden at the other side. And he was kind of thinking that he might expand his business out into the garden. So he, he basically bought the garden. The house came with it. So, as, as any of you that have lived in small towns, you'll understand that. Our family business is around the corner on Henry Street, which is, this is facing out onto the market square. So, in, um, from the moment I stepped inside the place, I knew it was a special house. Before I had uh, researched all the social history and what had gone on on the property, 
from the lease, from what was what remained in the property. It, it, it was like a, a, like a time warp. It was like it hadn't been touched from the early part of the 1900s. A, a lot of its fixtures and fittings were intact. So in um, in, 20, in 2008, uh, I uh, inherited the property, uh, and um, at that stage, the property had reached a crossroads. Um, it, it was it was now or never. The there was a lot of water, um, mainly water, <laughs> missing valleys, um, windows that were disintegrating, etc., etc. And so I had come across this concept, and I had stayed in heritage holiday homes in uh, the UK. And I thought it would fit the property very, very well. I, w I wanted to put something into it that would respect what, what was there, but find a new use for it. And considering where Kilrush is on the Wild Atlantic Way, that it would provide um, a tourist accommodation. So I applied for planning permission and was granted planning permission to subdivide the property into fire sorts, all that kind of stuff that went on. And in um, October, um, in October uh, two, uh, 2010, work commenced on the restoration of the, two up, up, of the two upper floors of the property. So you can see, as a result of water damage, the, the, these walls, these internal walls, were actually all damaged by a tank that was in the attic that over about 40 years, galvanized tank, had dripped down through the whole middle of the thing. Um, that was just one of the many, many horrors. Um, our back wall was, uh, it was heading north. Um, uh, there was lots of other things, Woodburn was waving at me, um, etc, etc. The usual things that are to be found in, um, in, um, in, in an old building when you start taking it apart. And then we found things that well, we, we thought that would be okay, but weren't okay. They had re-roofed the place in the 1970s um, uh, uh, rather badly because they should have replaced some of the beams and things like that. And so we had to go in and we had to do more work to the roof, um, all that. Once we had all the kind of structural work done and the upper floors were, were watertight again, we put back in all the, um, uh, all the modern services, plumbing, 21st century things that would be required. Then all the fixtures and fittings, doors, architraves, shutters, the whole lot, we had all those, they were all carefully removed, were all cleaned, um, cleaned, stripped of all the glass, and everything, and then refit it back into place. You can see here, this picture shows we're in the process of putting back in on the left hand side, we're in the process of putting back in um, some of the 10 sash windows in the property. Uh, it was a mammoth task. Uh, they were either conserved or replaced where we couldn't, um, where we couldn't save them. So in, um, in February, uh, sorry, in the beginning of 20, um, 2012, the property was finished. Our, our first guests arrived in um, February of 2012. Now, business was a little bit slow, uh, kind of heading into the summer of 2012, and I contacted um, Mary O'Brien and the Irish Landmark Trust. I don't know if any of you are familiar with them. Wonderful organization. And she came down and she had a chat with me, and she suggested that I take part in National Heritage Week, which was fantastic. Um, we took part in National Heritage Week that, that August. We opened the house on Saturday, we invited everybody in. At that stage, the room on the right hand side is the drawing room was, was restored. We brought them upstairs, we showed them the history. We showed them what looked like an ordinary building on the street had an extraordinary interior and had an extraordinary social um, uh, history to it. And these buildings, which are on our streets, up and down the country, are very, very much worth conserving. So we, we, once, once we, we got the house up and running, in 2013 it moved along, business continued to grow. I decided in 2014 to reinstate the uh, shop front, um, try and get this to work, um, reinstate the uh, original uh, Victorian shop front. Thankfully we had a photograph of, of, of the shop front and we um, were able to put it all back to the, uh, pretty much as it was. So we then, business was continuing to grow, and it, in 20, um, 20, uh, 2015, we decided to rehabilitate the ground floor. Now, as you all know, retail is pretty much dying, or, or, or uh, is, on, is on the downward trajectory 
in small towns throughout Ireland. And the rental potential of the ground floor was minimal, plus it would have also lost a lot of its internal fixtures and fittings if, 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 if we had um, turned it into a shop. Just going to go back one and just show you, this is the bar. So in, 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 the begin, in, in October again of 20, um, 2015, we started um, reconstruction and the restoration of the entire ground floor. And we turned it into another holiday let. So you can see, you can see the front door is here. We have the original snug gone back in. We have the counter. Parts of the um, shop shelves have all gone back in. So this leads back into um, the original back bar, which is now sitting room and back down to the bedroom accommodation. And one of the interesting things, and this is another thing that I would say to anybody that's in, involved in uh, restoration of, uh, of of the property of old properties is go out to the shed, because you'll find everything out in the shed. And if you're buying a property, don't let the auctioneer throw anything out. Do your own dig, because you'll find things that you never knew were there, or things that you didn't even know what the, what the purpose they were. I found two-thirds of the porch door, okay? And from that, we were able to reconstruct the two, the two inner double doors and the snug door. So, little things like that, they add the authenticity to it, they bring the property back to what it was, and that was just lying there, just discarded. So it's th things like that that are very, very important. Now, the final phase was completed this year, when we finally completed it, approximately eight years after we started. As you can see on the right-hand side, we stripped all the plaster off the front of the building, we realigned plastered it, and we reinstated the Georgian surrounds that had been removed in, in 1970 when the shop front had been put back, uh, in, had been taken down. So, in, at the end of April 2018, we uh, completed the project and um, we um, brought the building back as best as I could to its uh, original condition. As you can see, this wonderful picture from 1910 and um, what, 108 years later, uh, they're two not dissimilar. Uh, to, to each other. So, um, what, what, what lessons can you learn from this? Okay. Well, I think the biggest lesson is that we can reuse our, we can reuse our buildings within our towns. Uh, we have, we've, we've done this property in such a way that the ground floor can be used as an assisted living accommodation. So, with minimum, with minimum adaptation at a future point, a member of our family who needs to live on the plan can live on the ground floor. We, I also think it's very ideal that you could have a, somebody that wants to maybe downsize into town, that they could uh, have, have, have their own unit on the ground floor and maybe have a unit upstairs that they could uh, rent out or maybe when their family comes that they could have additional accommodation. And we've got to bear in mind that shops in, in, in their nature are very, very, very large open plan area, which is, which, which is ideal. For, um, for, I suppose, modern living, where we all want to kind of live in these kind of large, cavernous kitchen, living, dining rooms. But anyway, so, uh, thank you very much for taking, your, taking the time to listen to me today. This is actually, this is actually the, um, on the, the ground floor uh, apartment, the merchant store. This is what their original uh, Victorian parlour. Uh, that we reinstated at the end of the, uh, at the, at the back of the shop unit. And we've now turned into the master bedroom on the uh, ground floor apartment. As you can see, the uh, um, uh, tongue and groove ceilings are all back in. We, um, we, we had a bit of a dilemma over the flooring, but we got some beautiful salvage um, uh, uh, teak from a Glasgow school, um, all reinstated. And well, personally, I think it's uh, very good, and I'm very, very proud of uh, what I've created. Thank you.